Hello kids, happy Sunday. Are you ready for Sunday school today? I hope you are all doing fine and happy to be in Sunday school. Now, let us start our Sunday school with a word of prayer. Please repeat after me. Our Father in heaven, we give thanks for your grace and mercy. As we worship you, in our homes, please give us humble hearts and listening ears. We pray for the Holy Spirit to give us understanding and obedience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, before we listen to the Bible story, we will play a game. It is called Listen Closely. It's very simple, and this is how we are going to play it. I will play a sound, and you will have to guess what sound that is. Can do? Let's go. Can you guess? Yep, if you guess it's a sound of tearing a pe paper, you are right. Now, the next sound. Can you guess what sound that is? If you guess a sound of a bouncing ball, you are right. Now, the third sound. Hmm, what sound is that? Do you know what sound that is? It's the sound of a stapler. Okay, the fourth sound. Hmm, can you guess what sound that is? If you guess snapping finger, you are right. Okay, the last sound. All right, do you know what sound that is? It's a sound of keyboard. Well, that was fun, isn't it? But we are not quite done with the game yet. I have one more game. This one is more difficult as it requires you to pay real attention. And this is how we are going to play it. I will give you an instruction. So you have to listen attentively and follow my instruction. But at the same time, you will see some words of instruction on your screen as well. You have to ignore the screen and follow the instruction that I said only. Can do? Let's go. Say hi. Okay, so what did you say? Did you say hi or hello? If you said hi, you are paying attention. Great. Ready for another one? Let's go. Wave your hands. So, did you wave your hands or did you clap your hands? I hope all of you wave your hands. 
All right, so that that's it for our games today. So you are beginning to understand that paying attention and listening carefully are important in order to hear correctly, to understand what is said, and to obey commands. That is the way it is with God's word. He wants us to listen to and understand his word and do what his word says. And we have learned that even as a boy, Jesus understood, loved, and obeyed God's words. We have also learned that Jesus used God's word when he was tempted by Satan. Today, we are going to learn something else about Jesus and God's word. Listen closely as I read Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Then tell me what two things Jesus did. And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among people. So what are the two things Jesus did in this verse? Yes, Jesus was teaching and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. So why do you think Jesus taught and preached about the kingdom of God? You are right. Jesus taught and preached so that people would know about forgiveness of sins and how to love and obey God. Jesus taught God's word everywhere. He taught God's word in the synagogues, which is the place where Jews went to read the scriptures and pray. He taught God's word as he traveled from village to village. He taught God's word as he sat on a hillside with his disciples. And he taught God's word as he visited his friends in their homes. Jesus taught people what to believe about God and how to trust and obey him. And people listened to what he had to say. And even after his death and resurrection, Jesus preached and taught God's word. Let's now turn to our Bible and open the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 32. Can you find it? The book of Luke is in the New Testament. Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 32. Listen closely as I read the story. On the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that had happened here in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus the Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and our ruler handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, 
It is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. And he said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road? and open the scripture to us. Well, children, from these verses, we learn that on the day Jesus rose from the dead, two of his disciples were walking from Jerusalem to the town of Emmaus. As they walked, they talked about the death of Jesus. They discussed everything that had happened. As they walked along, Jesus came up and joined them, but they didn't realize it was Jesus. They thought Jesus was dead. What are you discussing together as you walk along? Jesus asked them. We were talking about Jesus, they say. Haven't you heard? Three days ago, he was crucified and we have thought he was the promised savior. The man's voice showed that their hearts were filled with sadness. So Jesus listened as they told their story. Then he said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Jesus was saying that the men were not trusting God's word. They were not remembering God's promises. Now, children, listen closely as I read God's word and tell me one thing that Jesus did to help his two sad disciples. Luke chapter 24, verse 27. Luke chapter 24, verse 27. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So, children, what did Jesus do to help his disciples? Jesus lovingly and patiently explained the scriptures to the disciples. Jesus showed them that the Old Testament was all about Jesus Christ himself, the promised savior. So when Jesus and the disciples got to Emmaus, the man asked him to have a meal with them. While they were eating, suddenly God caused them to realize that it was the risen Lord Jesus that was with them. And then Jesus left them. How excited the men were when they knew they had been talking to Jesus. 
and that Jesus was alive. Their hearts were no longer slow and sad, but filled with love and gladness. They went back to Jerusalem right away to tell the other disciples what had happened. It is true, they said, the Lord is risen. Now they understood and they believed God's word. Jesus preached and taught God's word. And he wants his church to continue to preach and teach God's word. Listen to what Jesus said before he left earth to go back to heaven. Let's turn to the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15. Mark, chapter 16, verse 15. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. What did Jesus command his disciples to do? Yes, Jesus commanded the disciples to go and preach the good news to everyone. The disciples trusted and obeyed God's word. They went everywhere preaching and teaching God's word. I am so glad that the Lord has given us preachers and teachers of God's word, just like Pastor Young. What can we do to encourage our pastor? Well, definitely we can pray for them, listen closely to what they teach, and we can help them in their ministry. We can take part in the ministry and serve the Lord and other people. We can do the same for our Sunday school teachers, just like me, and other teachers. We can listen closely to what they teach and pray for them. Just as Jesus commanded the disciples to spread the gospel, which is the good news that Jesus had come to save us from our sins, we ought to spread the gospel as well. Let us continue to believe and obey his word. That is the end of our Bible story, and now it's time for our memory first. Children, can you repeat after me? The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1, verse 14. Now, children, do you still remember our shorter catechism? This week, we will go through catechism question one to question five. Can you repeat after me? Who made you? God. Question one, who made you? God. Question two. What else did God make? All things. Question two, what else did God make? All things. Question three, why did God make you and all things? For his own glory. Question three, why did God make you and all things? For his own glory. Question four, how can you glorify God? By loving him and doing his commands. Question four, how can you glorify God? By loving him and doing his commands. Question five, why are you to glorify God? Because he made me and takes care of me. Question five, why are you to glorify God? Because he made me and takes care of me. 
All right, now it's time for activity. I believe your mommy and daddy would have printed this activity paper. So in here, it's a puzzle. So you need to find the words that is in a box, uh, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Okay, I hope you have fun solving this word puzzle. Okay, so let's sing the doxology to bring all the glories back to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. So this is the end of our Sunday school today. I'll see you next week, children. God bless you.